Hey, this is Tom Maxwell from Hell Yeah, and you are watching Loud TV. Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's great. Uh, we've been friends for a long time, and uh, it, it's uh, it, it's been a lot. It's been a, a while since we toured together, but it's it's great that they brought us over here to properly tour Europe and get the exposure that we we really need over here. Everything's different everywhere you go, you know. But found that the. Uh, People in Europe are very uh, receiving and, and very eager and, and excited for us to be here. So we think we're uh, doing some good things and come back, keep coming back. No, I mean, there's no, it's, it's not even important really anymore. You know, I think those days where people count on, uh, you know, record sales for for success uh, are have been kind of uh, exhausted, you know, especially now with streaming and the downloading and and, and uh, subscription based music services and stuff like that. So you just kind of have to you just have to adapt. And you know we're still on the the pioneering side of things where we have to uh, you know figure out the best way to get our music out there. Well, you have to tour a lot, you have to tour constantly, and you have to be smart and brand your name out there so you have other streams of income and really count on just a grassroots following. That's the main thing, is getting your fan base, your grassroots fans that are always gonna be there. Because if you just rely on what radio or anything like that, there's no, there's no uh, uh, hard-fought audience with that. You know, when you get out there and you're touring and you're touring and you're touring and you're one by one fan and one by one, one you know, it's it's more uh, uh, life lifetime, I would say, support out there. Back in the day, before our time, you know, uh, you know, bands could there was mystery there. You know, there was no, there was no internet. You know, people had to buy magazines or wait to see their bands. You know, when they came in the concert, you know, that once or twice a year, if that. Nowadays, you have total access to anything that you want, any time that you want, and uh, because of that, people, uh, people were more fickle and more. Uh, they just want instant gratification. You know, now, 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 and what's next, next? So, you know, it's it's much different. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, there's probably some songs and some riffs somewhere tucked away in a vault somewhere of dimes. But you know, this uh, we were very fortunate enough to. Uh, to record a song that he he uh, him and Vinny were a part of, and it was it was quite a thrill to have him on you know on one of our albums mm -hmm. ten years or so later. Yeah. Nothing. It's perfect the way it is. I'm happier more since we did Blood for Blood and this record because it's more of the type of music that I like to do. Before, I mean, I was very proud of the stuff we did, but it was, there was other cooks in the kitchen, so to say, so, so to speak. And I wasn't really a big fan of some of the more party, rock and roll type of stuff. Um, I, I like it more aggressive and more, you know, emotional and more organic and real, yeah. rather than just kind of like a, you know, I think we were just a little out of focus back in the day. You know, not haven't really found ourselves as songwriters and as, as uh, our full band. And once we uh, got two new members in the band, especially with Kyle and Brady, you know, it really helped solidify our sound. And you know, we were able to, uh, you know, 
take the music where at least you know we originally wanted to take it I think when me and you know me and Chad first started talking about putting this band together and it took years for us to get there but I'm more happy now than I than I was in the past sure it's, you know I wouldn't change a thing from the last two albums to me blood for blood really is our first record it's the way I look at it because it's like the real first concentrated this is the, the record we were supposed to do same with undeniable yeah I think it was just our way of uh, just trying different things I mean I think if you're hearing more industrial you're probably thinking of the song undeniable with the beats that's going on and that was uh, that was cool you know it was a, 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 a tool that we used for rhythms and, and atmospheric sounds and uh, our producer Kevin had this this uh, this percussive type of thing going on and uh, it just inspired these kind of these kind of mechanical type of riffs to go over top of it so yeah I could see a little bit sure Me and Kevin, me, every, yeah, all of us, pretty much. It's, the way it starts, it's just pretty much me in the studio with Kevin or me and Vinny together. And we kind of put the foundation of everything together. And then, you know, uh, Brady will come in and do some decoration, solos. And then Kyle come, is there with me and the whole time, you know, writing bass. And then Chad will come in in the very end and kind of do his thing afterwards. But it uh, pretty much just starts just sitting in the studio, just writing, just writing riffs. Absolutely. And Kevin has a lot to do with that for sure. I mean, uh, you know, the, one of the things I like about him is uh, he's a composer. He's a, he's a writer. He's not somebody who just turns knobs and gets good sounds. You know, that's, anybody can do that pretty much if you're smart. Yeah. But to be a good producer, I think it's... Uh, you know, you, you really have to understand music, you know how to write music, know how to tear music apart, and see see it five or six different ways. And uh, yeah, he's 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 opened up my idea, my mind to a, a, a lot of different things musically, expanding myself. You know, and I like a lot of arrangements. I like fast, I like heavy, I like sadness and pain, all of that. And, so, you know, I, I've, I've uh, found what I'm looking for in a producer with Kevin. I don't, probably won't work with anybody else. I'm, I'm not, don't fix what's not broke. You know, it's, not, it's, it's hard writing songs. You know, I could probably sit and write 10 songs a day, but it doesn't mean any of them are going to be any good. You know, to write good songs, it's tough. You don't know if anything's going to be a good song or not. So you really have to follow your heart, and your gut, your instincts. And be and believe it and be behind it because if you're not then it's just it's like faking an orgasm. It's just fake Well, that's Paul. I still have it. It's in my house living under my bed I still play it. I still write a lot of songs on it. Do you play every day? Every day Every day. It's like a drug? Sometimes yeah, unless, you know, so <clears throat> times when I'm home, <clears throat> not as much, because uh, I have to be kind of psychologically ready to play guitar, in a way. When I'm home, I'm more of a farmer, <laughs> raising my kid. Yeah, yeah, you can never stop learning. Uh, you improve as a songwriter, improve as a player, improve as a band member, improve as a friend everything you can always improve all the way around more records more touring we're not going to stop there's no point you know we have uh, we have a strong fan base and we're still traveling the world people still want us to come to different countries and play and you know we keep putting out strong records and good records once you know once if, if the love affair were to die in writing music, then I'd probably stop, you know, because I don't want to do something I don't want to do. And it's hard enough, it's hard enough being on the road and away from your family and your friends for long periods of time by itself. So 
you, you know, you need to make sure that you love what you do, no matter what you do. Love it and be the best at it. Or else it's just not worth it, you know? And if it ever got to the point where I just wasn't loving it anymore, then I'd go home, get on my boat and say bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm writing, I mean, a little bit, and just riffs, just collecting, collecting riffs and, and hooks, a little bit at a time. I, you know, I, I uh, didn't really think about it right now.